And with that, the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, is finished. Uh, almost 46 minutes he's been talking, not quite, but almost. And of all of that, it might have been about less what he said and more about what was not said. Absolutely. At a moment, you had pin drop silence when the Prime Minister said, how can you not speak up? How can you be silent when after six million Jews were killed? 70 years ago, there's a country who wants to kill us again. And he waited for someone to speak up. And he waited for someone to speak up. And I was watching social media. It was a long wait, Adam. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, too, because, you know, a lot of uh, pundits out there were saying that Netanyahu was going to put an olive branch out towards the U.S. He wasn't going to isolate himself. He was going to try to find a way to criticize the Iran deal, but not step too much on other folks' opinions of it. Um, he did the exact opposite. I mean, he, as, you, as we saw right there, he stood up and basically said, you're all wrong and we're not going to take it anymore. And, and, uh, and I thought that was incredibly impressive. The, the silent as being part of it, the silent motion, and I'm looking at all the different notes I took. I mean, he just, he went through it and he gave specific instances. Yes. Mm -hmm. you, you know, Sandra, in our notes leading up to today, mm -hmm. we had fully anticipated, as Adam just said, that there wouldn't be an isolationist move mm -hmm. by him, that he would be open. He would, he, and he did for a moment talk about the friendship uh, between the United States and Israel. Yeah, and he had a lot of really powerful one-liners in that speech, and, and I too was watching social media while we were sitting here listening to what appears to be a very eloquent speech, and a lot of people agree on social media talking about this is this is a, a true leader, uh, the way he's speaking and defending his country and saying that Israel will continue to respond forcefully, he said, but he said, when bad behavior is rewarded, it only gets worse. Best intentions don't prevent the worst outcomes. You know, Harris, you asked me before the break what I want from President Obama. I want leadership and diplomacy, and that's exactly what that was. And for any pro-Israel American right now, I don't know how your heart doesn't break just watching that because it's very difficult to watch our only ally, the only democracy in the Middle East, Prime Minister Netanyahu. Just we have no relationship with him and with Israel anymore, and it's just heartbreaking. Andrea, what do you think about the fact? I mean, he had a lot of words in there. I know you guys. We are all making comments as we're listening to him. One of tear down in Iran's global terror network. I mean, he used certain verbiage mm -hmm. yeah. that Americans would identify with. Tear down this wall. I mean, y you go through, you know, you mentioned best intentions, don't uh, don't prevent the worst outcomes. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I thought the most incredible point was when he went through, this is what they've done in the last six months, by the way. Boom, 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 boom. And everyone's looking the other way. What about the most compelling argument against the deal that I've heard yet? And it's drastically different from what we've heard from the White House, from Susan Rice, from John Kerry, from who the Media. the opposite and he did have that great one-liner he talked about making sure that these um, these uh, regulations weren't swept under the Persian rug I believe the last speech yeah. he gave on Israel was he was talking about yellow cake they can't have their yellow cake and eat it too I do agree with you Adam his words toward the White House specifically mm -hmm. were pointed and he has every reason to be pointed because he's given them opportunity after opportunity and we've seen this president not only try and redraw the borders lecture him, wag his finger to return to those 69 borders. We have a president who wouldn't even appear at a joint press conference with him, yet at the same time appeared with the president, or should I say, the prime minister of England. Not only that, Harris, but the rhetoric that we've seen coming out of this White House has been harsher towards Benjamin Netanyahu than has been for the mullahs in Iran. And I think Netanyahu is sick of it, and he's fighting for the existence of his nation. Yeah. He has no choice. You, blame you heard him he talk about no the UN uh, resolutions against his country, you know, neighboring north of 20 against Iran, yeah. neighboring south of 2. Right. Um, all right. We will cover this as it continues to happen. There's so much going on at the UN this week, and we're all over it. Uh, we are getting a look at a new batch of Hillary Clinton's emails. And we are asking now, did she put our national security at more risk than previously thought? Those emails reportedly contain a lot of secrets, more than we've seen previously. Like this doozy. Hackers linked to Russia tried to breach her account multiple times. Stay close.